the words of the late Dr. Miles Monroe, the Bible is not for information. Application of the Constitution produces transformation. Your transformation then creates a positive vibration that synchronizes your spiritual GPS with kingdom navigation. Blessings and peace everyone. Introducing to you this book authored by my brother and friend, Ambassador Nicholas Robdan Robertson. Positive Vibration, Navigating Through Difficult Times. Between the covers of this book, you will find effective tools and powerful weapons that will help you to live victoriously in spite of struggles and challenges. This is a must read. I'm Reverend Valentine Rodney, and I want to introduce to you my book on prayer, Amazon bestseller, Shameless Persistence, The Audacity of Purposeful Praying. This book will teach you the art of perseverance in prayer, and it will motivate you in terms of developing a strong prayer life. You have several biblical characters that will help you, and it will transform your life. Get that book on Amazon.com. God bless you. Good morning, Positive Vibration. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a day like no other, a new day that Christ has made, a new day that he's given us the chance to see this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We serve a wonderful and living God. Good morning in the United States. Good morning over in Canada. Good morning, Cayman Islands. Jamaica, good morning. Big up yourself. Good morning to the rest of the Caribbean, the rest of the world. Just good morning wherever you're, you are. Good morning in the, well, I guess good afternoon in the UK. Not sure time change is tripping me up this morning. But greetings wherever you are in the world. Greetings. Good morning, story time with Nelly. Good morning, Sister Andrea Reed. Good morning, Sister Claudia Brown. Good morning, Sister Paula Otten Keen. Good morning, Sister Maxine Crossdale Williams. Good morning. Good morning. We are alive. We are blessed to be alive this morning. So we just need to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because He deserves it all. He deserves it all. Before I go any further, we're just going to stop to just pray and invite um, God to be a part um, of our proceedings this morning. Let us just, let's just adore him because he's worthy to be praised. Can I write just, Father, we just want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you for giving us a chance to be here this morning. Thank you for choosing us um, this morning, mighty God. Lord, we just want to thank Thank you, thank you for this platform where every day we're able to come to listen to your word, mighty God, to feast in all that you have prepared for us, mighty God. To just come and be motivated, be encouraged, so we can go forward to encourage and motivate others, mighty God. But we just want to say thank you, thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. We just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, and give you all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise because you deserve it. Mighty God, as we proceed this morning, please and begin to just open our hearts to remember who you are, to know who you are, and to know whose we are, mighty God. As we go forward this morning, just continue to touch this internet connection, the platform, the, the people receiving the message this morning, and also your servants who are giving the message this morning, mighty God, in your holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Once again, welcome, welcome to Positive Vibration. Welcome to any um, first timers that we have on this platform. Just good morning and welcome. Um, I think I'm seeing a, a, a a Giselle that is on just good morning and welcome to the platform. Lady Daniel like to say this is the day that the Lord has made, you know, and I can stand in agreement this morning that regardless of how our reality may seem, regardless of how the day may look, how the day may start out, 
the Lord is in total control. He has created it. And I can tell you that I'm one of those people who admire the beauty of his creation. None of my days ever look the same. They're always different, but beautiful nonetheless in whatever way it come across this morning. I want us to just, you know, the same way how we can admire simple things, simple things. Just try to think about <laughs> the magnitude of our God. And every time I say it, I have to smile because our God is a good God. He is an amazing God. You know, so sometimes we're going through these difficult times. And this is how I process anytime I'm going through my struggles or just hard times. I just always try to remember God's creation and remember that I am one of God's creation. And if everything else around me can seem so beautiful, it looks so beautiful and attractive. I know that I am out there looking beautiful for God as well, because we are representation of him. So this morning, as we, we try to go into our um, worship session, um, our ministry, you know, the, the, the preaching, the teaching, the beating, like I like to call it, just open your hearts, open, open our mind. You know, Paul, they tell us um, in scripture that we have to renew our mind. So this morning, I want us to just open our minds so we can take in whatever it is that God wants us to take in this morning, whatever it is that he has prepared for us, because we know that any information that we get should not just be that. It should not be just information, but it is worth us diving into and creating that transformation so we can go out and bless um, others with the knowledge that we have gained. You know, so God is good. God is good. And I always and will forever say it um, because I am grateful that he chose me. He loved me. He first loved me. And then he chose me even when I was unclean, even when I was in the world, even when I'm not doing the things that he wants me to do, he chooses me. Daily, he chooses me. That means he sees something special in us that he's able to give us a chance to be here, to carry on, to be the salt of this earth, to carry on his work, his legacy, you know? So we have to carry ourselves in that manner to to ensure that whatever it is that we're doing we're representing god and we're representing him well we have to understand our purpose um the purpose of why we're here because in reality in reality that's what god cares about he cares about our purpose so it doesn't matter how caught up we get in ourselves in our emotions in our feelings it does not matter what we do the end result is, is, is about God's business. He will ensure that whatever it is that we're doing, it comes back around for him to get all of the glory because God must get all of the glory. Hallelujah. God must get all of the glory. And that's why scripture says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So even when we mess up, even when we take a detour, and I like to say this, we are construction. We are a construction site. Daily, we're being worked on. You know, we have a lot of detours that come about in our lives. You know, so we, we are a construction site. We have to understand it. None of us are perfect. Daily, we are being worked on. Only daily, you know, we can get better at loving our God. You know, just like, like when... Um, what you call it, metal, or, or one of those fine fine jewelry, go through that, that process. It takes time. That's the same thing with us. We are going through that process that takes time to get us to that place. But every day we should learn to love God a little bit more. Learn to understand his ways a little bit more. And I'm just going to interject right there because oftentimes we think about... Um, 
Jesus and we think about the acts that he came and he, and he did. We think about the healing. Um, we think about the, the, the miracles. We think about, you know, him walking on water, him calming the, the sea. We think about all these acts that he, he came and he did, all these actions. But sometimes we have to stop and think about his ways because our God is bigger than the actions. Think about his ways. Try to walk in his ways, you know? So that's the biggest part of our existence is trying to emulate the ways of God, you know, not the action, not, not, not all of these things, but the ways of God. Because once we have the ways of God, then the way we live will be like God and we'll be able to honor and glorify him in the best way that we can. We can give him the best us, you know, the best vessel that he can use. So this morning, as we proceed in our worship session, just kind of think about some of the things that I'm, um, I've said this morning, some of the things that I've said this morning, so we can go into worship, genuine worship, so we can give God all of the glory, all of the honor, and all the praise. Once again, welcome to the platform. Welcome to Positive Vibration. You know, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm seeing Sister Camille Buford, welcome. And just anybody who's new on this platform, welcome to Positive Vibration. And we're going to proceed into worship this morning as we um, bring on, on camera <laughs> Sister Hazel um, this morning. But um, like I tell you, we have so much to give God thanks for. We may have a little delay this morning. <laughs> we may have a little delay this morning because of time changes. And it just gives us something else to think about. Because how is it we as little people cannot fathom? Up to yesterday, I knew that the time was going to change this morning. But somehow this morning, I failed to remember that there will be a time change. But our God, if you think about it and think about how the world works, that we're saying good morning to some people and we're saying good afternoon to some people and we're saying good evening to some people, some places. But sister, is just a thing that God is able to control and remember <laughs> the time that should be in each of these different regions, each of these different places or country. Mm -hmm. You know, the different seasons that's supposed to be there. Think about the God that we are serving. Our little minds can't fathom it, but he is the creator and he's able to control everything that goes on around. So, you know, what? we're going to worship this big, mighty God this morning. So I'm going to turn it over to Sister Hazel as she brings the worship this morning. Amen. Over to you, Sister. Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning, my dear sister, and good morning, PV. We want to glorify the name of the Lord God this morning. Yes, the time change, you know, kind of threw us off a little bit. And um, I, I'm here. I'm here. We are here. So we thank God. Another day we're going to exalt his name. We're going to glorify him and give him all the praise and the thanks. We're going to big up God this morning in spite of everything that is going on. So let us uh, stay in the, the gratitude, the heart of worship before the Lord God this morning and give him our all as we worship him. For thou, O Lord, heart high above all the earth, Thou art exalted high above, O God. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted high above all gods. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt. Oh Lord, I exalt thee. I 
Exalt him this morning. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh Lord, I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. I exalt you, Lord. I exalt thee, and I exalt thee, oh Lord, for thou, O oh Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted high above all other gods. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted high above all of the gods i exalt thee i exalt you i exalt thee i exalt thee oh god oh god oh god and i Hallelujah, Lord God. I exalt thee, Lord Father God, on high this morning. You are worthy, Father God in heaven. Hallelujah, mighty God. I continue to give you the praise and the glory and the honor, dear Lord God. Take all the praise and the worship, dear Lord Father God. You are worthy, and I exalt thee. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, God in us, revealed in us. His name is called Emmanuel, oh 
Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel. God in us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel, God in us, revealed in us. His name is called Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, 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 your name is called. Emmanuel, God in us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. Thank you, dear Lord God. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Despite the voice is trying to wake up this morning, I still give him praise. I still thank him. Let's change gear this morning. Wherever he went, he was doing good. He's a mighty healer. He cleansed the leper. When the people saw him, they started shouting everywhere he went. My Lord, he was doing good. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He's a mighty healer. He cleansed the leper. When the people saw him, they started shouting everywhere he went. My Lord, he was doing good. What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render to you, O God? I will praise you, O Lord. I shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, O Lord? You give me peace, Lord. You give me joy, Lord. You give me everlasting life i will praise you oh lord i shout hallelujah what shall i render to you oh lord what shall i render what shall i render what shall i render to you oh lord i will praise you oh lord i shout hallelujah what shall I render to you, O oh Lord? Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget? what you've done for me how can i forget how you set me free how can i forget how you bought me out 
How can I forget? No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you bought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. How can I forget? what you've done for me how can i forget how you set me free how can i forget how you bought me out how can i forget no never something down inside of me telling me to go on something down inside of me telling me to go on Something down inside of me telling me to go on, go on, go on, go on. The Holy Ghost down inside of me telling me to go on. The Holy Ghost power inside of me telling me to go on. The Holy Ghost power inside of me telling me to go on, go on, go on, go on. Something down inside of me telling me to go on. Something down inside of me telling me to go on. Something down inside of me telling me to go on. Go on, go on, go on. The Holy Ghost power inside of me telling me to go on. The Holy Ghost power inside of me telling me to go on. Oh, the Holy Ghost power inside of me, telling me to go on, go on, go on, go on. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you to go on, keep pressing, keep pushing, keep praying. God will come through for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is well able as we place our problems, our situation in the Lord's hand, he is Amen. able to bring Amen. us through. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless Amen. you, my dear sister. Blessing, Sister Hazel. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you, this morning, we get a lot of little, you know, sometimes they say all the additives have to be stripped away. All those um, enhancements have to be stripped away. So sometimes we just have to bring our genuine self. You know, and the worship this morning was not short of a genuine self. It at least gave me things to think about this morning. Um, you know, what a mighty God we serve. Sister Aza remind us that we should always exalt thee, exalt our God. You know, he is deserving of all of the glory. So we need to exalt him. Then she also made mention that he's Emmanuel. We know what Emmanuel means. We know that it means that God is with us. And I think I saw, um, 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 what's her name? One of the sisters wrote in the chat that regardless of the, the season, Sister Camille Buford, regardless of the time change or the season change, our God remains the same, you know? So he is always with us, no matter what the situation is that we're going through, no matter how much we feel like our back is against the walls, he's always there. And then she left us with the thought, you know, she, Jesus, I will never forget what you have done for me. Let us not forget what Jesus has done for us this morning. Let us not forget let us always remember and be reminded of what he has done for us jesus knew his purpose and he carried he carried it through gracefully so too we have to identify and understand what our purpose is and it's interesting because i was reading um something and i think i can find the story right here you know where and i I, I laughed at it at first, but when you put some thought into it, it's it's very real, serious, and interesting to the way we as human beings think. 
Again, which is why I say we must not so much be focused on the action, you know, the healing, the miracles and all of these things that, that was done here on the earth. But we need to focus on the ways of God. Hallelujah. The ways of God. And in this, this blog, it says that one day a man visited the doctor because he was in excruciating pain. You know, so not no little baby pain. He was in heavy pain. The doctor asked him, where does it hurt? The man answered and said, all over. The doctor told the man to touch his shoulder. The man touched his shoulder and cried out in pain. Next, the doctor told the man to touch his forehead. The man touched his forehead and cried out again in pain. The doctor told the man to touch his knee. The man touched his knee and winced in pain. He said, doctor, everywhere I touch, I am in pain. The doctor thoroughly examined the man and concluded, no wonder you are in pain everywhere you touch. You have dislocated a finger. You have dislocated a finger. We may laugh about the ridiculousness of it in reality because I laughed when I read that story at first. But the, the, the reality is many of us, many of us are doing the very same thing just in a different way. Many of us feel like everything are in our lives is going wrong. Daily we feel like everything in our lives is going wrong. Yet, in fact, there's just one thing in our lives that is wrong, you know? And this one thing is what is causing many of us to live without purpose. Again, I say we have to understand what our purpose is and then move, be obedient to what God is calling us to do. Move into action, you know, once we understand the ways of God. We understand what God wants of us, what he wants us to do. We move into obedience. And we know that obedience is not really getting up and saying something, but it's the action of doing what is what is what we're led to do. Right? So we simply go through the motions every day, weighing down ourselves with the emptiness of life. And we can't do that. Purpose is not measured by what you have done compared to what somebody else has done. But what you have done compared to what you are supposed to do. So oftentimes we hear comparing, we're looking at somebody else's ministry. Yeah, and we're comparing ourselves with those ministry. When in reality we should be comparing what we are doing with what God wants us to do, what we're supposed to do. These are some heavy thoughts that we need to be thinking about. You know, the only way to know your purpose is to experience and walk closely with God, the one who created us and destined our purpose. Now, you know, if we, if we are really children of God, we should not be running around and trying to figure out or, you know, discover what our purpose is. Rather, we should be experiencing God. And ever since I've learned that, the only way you can know God is to truly experience him. I've always used it. Because that's the only way you can give a good account of who your God is by experiencing him. Once we experience our God, we will be walking with him. So we should fully understand our purpose. Experience God and we'll be able to experience our purpose. You know, I know I come on a little bit heavy this morning, but I'm just speaking what is in my spirit this morning. I'm just speaking what in, is in my spirit this morning. And we have to understand our purpose as Christians. We have to understand our purpose as human beings. You know, we have to understand our purpose in this world. And we have to be obedient to what that purpose is. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get back to that, that place of relationship. Like Rev said last week, we need to identify that secret place. We need to dive into the word of God. We need to pray without ceasing. You know, gain that close relationship with God so we can hear his voice when he's speaking to us, when he's leading us. We can identify that he's the one talking to us. We can be obedient to his will and carry out his purpose. Because again, in reality, it's not about what we want. We will detour. We are humans. We will detour. But he knows how to get us back on the right path so we can fulfill his purpose, the will that he has set out for us so that he can get the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I invite the man of God to this platform, I just want to say good morning once more. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing some new persons in the chat. So I just want to say good morning, Sister Elaine Lopez. Good morning, Kino Arms. Welcome to the platform. Good morning, Sister Marlene Jackson. Good morning. I'm seeing another new person here. Good morning, Sister Stephanie Brown. Good morning, Nerone and Tia Show, and welcome to the platform. We serve a wonderful, wonderful God that I just can't stop saying. I lose words. Because there's not enough words in my vocabulary to tell you how wonderful of a God we are. But I know that he is an amazing God. He is wonderful and he should be praised. So I, I'm sitting here this morning telling you, no matter what you're going through, whatever it is that you're going through, no matter the situation, whatever it is that you are going through, lean on him, worship him genuinely. Because he's in control of it all. He is in control of everything. And he will work it out for our good. We just have to be patient. But he will work it out. Because our God, our God is not going to get embarrassed. So even when we detour, he's going to put us back on the right path. So that he can get the glory. It's not about us. We are the vessels and we should come willing for our God to use us. But instead, try to understand and emulate his way so we can carry out the purpose that is set before us, the mission that is set before us so that our God, our God can get the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I welcome the man of God to the platform. I'll just go ahead and pray once more because I feel it in my spirit to pray once more. And we know that prayer can't be too much. You understand? The whole fact that we are here this morning, we have to give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm loving Father, we come to you once more, mighty God. Again, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. You never, never say enough how much we are grateful for you, mighty God. I thank you for being God. Because even when we mess up, mighty God, you, you scripture says you keep no record of our wrongdoings, mighty God. We just want to thank you. Thank you for being able, being that tender and loving and kind and perfect God who is willing to, to just kind of, when we detour, to put us back on the path that we need to be. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for loving us and crowning us into your, your royalty, even when we're unclean, mighty God. We just want to thank you. We want to thank you for this platform. We want to thank you for us being able to come and gather to hear your word, mighty God. And not only to hear your word, but to be transformed by your word, mighty God, so we can go out into the world and transform others, mighty God. Let them know who you are so we can boast on our loving God. Mighty God, we just want to thank you for all the people who are on this platform. You know, the fact that they are willing to take time to come here to hear your word, mighty God, speaks volume. Lord, please, I'm begging you that 
when the message is given, everybody's hearts will be open, minds will be open to receive whatever it is that you've laid on the man of God's heart for us to know, mighty God. But also that we will leave full, not only encouraged or motivated, mighty God, but full where we can live the word, where we can share the word, where we can uphold those standards to understand that we are representing you, mighty God. Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to say thank you because there's not enough way to say thank you, mighty God, for never leaving or forsaking us, even when it may seem like you're not there. Just thank you. Thank you, Abba Father, for all that you do, all that you are doing, and all that you have done, mighty God. In your loving and precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, man of God. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I'm waking up. Welcome. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm not hearing you. And I don't know if it's from my end. So people in the chat will have to um, let us know if they're hearing the man of God. Are you guys hearing, um, Reverend? Is that better? Amen. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? All right. Blessings and salutation. Thank you so much for joining us another morning um, right here inside of um, Positive Vibration. Let me just remind you that this is a program where we explore your reality from God's perspective. This is a program where we endeavor to explore your reality from God's perspective. We want to let you know that, listen, we can always differ in opinions and views, but there's one thing that is always going to connect us together, and that is going to be what the Word of God says. Amen. Praise God. I have a word for you this morning. I have a word for you to share with you this morning. I believe that it will be a blessing to you. But let me use this time out to just um, celebrate for a few seconds what the Lord has done. You would see that my background nicely decked out in, in black. And you see that it says Builderman Foundation Global. You know, it has been some two years now that the Lord has laid it on our hearts to just find other young men and just invest in other young men. And I just hope that the men who are on here or who are aligned here are thinking about joining this prestigious movement. Yes, we, we feel the need to empower. We feel the need to, to help people to recognize their identity in God. Because we're, we, we, you're, if you know your identity, then you will know your purpose. If you know you're a cheer, then you know you will also know that you were made to sit upon. Yeah. So if you know who you are as a man, then you will know what God expects of you. And so, you know, it, it, we, we have spent months in planning with various teams and mm. persons and I mean, while we have become a, a foundation, registered foundation, yes, that seeks to empower and development, I believe that the greater strength and win does, does not come from the mere fact that, you know, we were able to, to form a company, but it's the fact that we are able um, to go in and do an actual, do the actual work. So today, um, uh, well, I, I want to say a delegation from from positive vibration yes is gone into uh, into manchester jamaica and they're going to the mount olivet boys home that's where they're on their way to and we just want to at this time just big up our donors our sponsors yeah i contend that ministry is not just about charity but it also entails charity for if i learn to address the needs of those who are vulnerable, then they are most likely to listen to the message that I want to share with them. So the team has gone into the mission ground um, just, to, um, just to, to share. And they are bringing with them um, some of our, our, our materials that we have been using here to empower ourselves. So we want to big up all those who donated books and, and all those um, 
who supported the, the initiative in one way or the other. So we just want you, while we're in program this morning, just to remember, amen, the Reed family. Uh, yes, the Williams, the Graham, of course, um, Sir Valentine, and all the other team, the Walcott. Yes, I don't want to miss anybody, you know, but the entire team, the Crystal Williams uh, is also on that journey. So it's a big move. All right. And uh, we, we are just really grateful and excited. So let's continue to pray for them. We're also praying that God will continue to connect us with donors and sponsors. Remember, maybe it's a book that you donate and that book can change the life of a young man maybe some of your time maybe it's you coming to be a part of our program that is going to create an impact and just to support us as we we go on and let me just use this time to say that come this this friday we're offering a master class part one in a master class and this is free yeah, it is free to you, but sponsored, um, definitely. And we want to invite the men to come on board and sign up. We're going to delve into the topic in depth. Who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, and, and so we want you to get all those men and just, just ask them to come on board and just to come um, and just sign up and become a part of this program that we are advocating for. And so in a little while or so, one of my team members will just post the link inside the chat um, for persons to sign up. And you know all those men, bring them to us. Let us make the change. We believe that we have been given the call, given the commission in this time to, to make little copies um, of, 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 you know, of, of empowered men, um, that will make this world a better place. So we are on a, we, um, wives don't, uh, wives don't lose faith. We are on a quest to empowerment. <laughs> and of course, children, don't worry. We're on a quest to empower men. Amen. But this morning, I want to share with you on the topic Amen. Remember that we have been dealing with believers' empowerment and enrichment. And I just want to remind us because uh, it's, it's necessary for us to remind ourselves, right? When it is truthful, when it is right and honest, we need to remind ourselves because it not only reminds us of what we need to do, Yes, but it says that we believe in this and it helps us to clear up any misunderstanding. The word enrichment really speaks to the action of improving or enhancing the quality or value of something. Every time I come into the presence of the Lord, every time I engage in his word, the goal is that the quality of my life should be improved. I want to say to somebody this morning that my goal in coming into the presence of the Lord is not necessarily to feel good. It is not necessarily to act on my emotion, but I intend to become a better version of myself. I wish somebody would go in the comment section and declare, Lord, help me to be a better version of myself. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Help me to fall in line with your expectation because only then can I claim to have been improved. Enrichment speaks to the process of making someone wealthy, wealthier, and better. Let me say to you on this platform that the goal is not necessarily talking about earthly wealth, but I'm talking about one who is rich in character, one who is rich in attitude. And oh yes, the church, the people of God, we are short of people who are rich in integrity. But this is what the word of God is about. It is about correcting those flaws, rebuking us when we are wrong and teaching us the appropriate doctrine so we can get it right. So if you are falling short this morning, all is not lost. You are at the place of improvement. I wish I could get some Somebody to go to the comment section and say, I am at the right place. I am at the place of improvement. I am at the place where my faith can be improved. I am at the faith where my rough edges can be corrected. I don't know people of God, but I ain't always got it right. I ain't always meet up to the standard. You know why? Because God's standard is so high that 
I by myself will never be able to get there. This is why I need Jesus. No wonder why the Bible tells me in St. John 14 and verse 6, Oh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Listen, I'm not just talking about heaven, but no man can claim to have a relationship with God unless he comes to me because it is by his blood that that connection that bridge is bridge from sin bridge from lowliness bridge from the guttermost the uttermost oh glory to god bridge from helplessness to a state of hope come on somebody i'm at the right place i wish i was in church this morning i would tell you touch two or three persons next to you and ask them are you at the right place because watch this it is not subjected to those physically uh, and geographical location but it is also speaking about our mental and spiritual location the bible says where two or three is gathered in anything touching his name oh this morning i've come together with some people who are ready to agree in faith i'm ready to agree with some people because when we are in the right place we must see improvement oh where two or three are gathered there am i in the midst hear me somebody i want to invite god in the midst this morning but i got to be at the right place come on somebody i got to be a place of faith i got to be at a place where i recognize that i need god i got to be at a place where i recognize that i just can't live without him oh come on somebody one shall chase a thousand two shall put ten thousand to flight there is power when we are united there is power when we speak with one voice there is power when we're in the right place i feel like preaching this morning come on somebody there is power when i know who i am there is power when we are praying on one accord ay, ay, ay. the bible tells us in acts chapter 2 that they were praying in one accord and according to verse 2 we had the intervention of the holy ghost they were filled and spoke in in cloven tongues i come to tell you on this platform the cloven tongues i speak about is not shama shama i'm talking about is they spoke in language the scripture says that others could understand because the purpose of us coming together is to make other person's life better i wish somebody could declare this morning i come to connect with you because i want to invest in your life lord of mercy we have got to understand that the presence of the lord is about improving others a need for you to be improved a need for you to grow a need for you to become better a need for you watch this somebody if i have strong soldiers then we can withstand in the evil days if i got people of faith then we can withstand the ploys of the enemy if i got strong people of faith then i got a worship team i got to tell you people of god i need a worship team that is on one accord i need a worship team that is first and foremost sold out to god sold out to the mission sold out to the purpose i'm gonna preach this morning come on somebody come on i want to be oh god connected in the right place with the right people when i'm connected in the right place then the people that are present oh lord almighty oh god they will have the word in them oh praise the name of the lord and their goal will be to remain connected to christ oh the bible said in saint john 15 and verse 1 my father is the husband man i am the vine and he are the branches hear me some when I'm in the right place, I understand that there is an interconnectivity. There is an interdependence. There is 
interrelationship. Oh, I've got to tell people of God, you can't be a believer. You can't claim to be at the right place, but despise the relationship with others. But this, oh God Almighty, oh, you can't love the vision when you're at the right place. I've got to tell you what Jesus said. Can a kingdom divide against itself and stand? No, impossible. Oh, praise the name of the Lord because there is the need for people to not just be gathered but to have one mission, one motive, one intent. I need the people of God. One intent and that intent is to impact. That intent is to be enriched and to enrich. Is to be empowered and to empower. Is to be strengthened and to strengthen. Is to be taught and to teach somebody need to go ahead and say God enrich me today oh praise the name of the Lord enrich me today Lord hallelujah enrich me so the word enrichment speaks about improvement hear me you can oh God no one goes to the car wash and leave with a more messy vehicle mm -mm. oh Lord it, it, it disrupts the order, Lord of mercy. Uh, oh Lord, it means you didn't get service for your time and service for your money. It was a waste of your investment. If you come into the presence of the Lord and you are not experiencing improvement. Hold on. When I speak of improvement, I'm not necessarily speaking about the mansion on the hilltop. Neither am I talking about the wonderful gifts that we often boast in. But I'm speaking about my conduct. You see the purpose of the Holy Ghost. you got to find that in Galatians 5 and 16. Paul says, walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What that literally means is to walk under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Is to allow the Holy Ghost to live, to dwell and to reside. Hear me, people of God. If the Holy Ghost is God, he is going to dwell where there is praise. Let me find I know if I'm in the right place today. Oh God, for the Bible says he inhabits the place of praise. He inhabits the hearts of God Almighty where there is praise. Come on, somebody. It's the time for you to give the Lord praise. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to reside and to preside. He is the chairman of the board. He determines my every walk. No wonder why the psalmist said, the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. Jesus said, I'm giving you the Holy Ghost because he will guide you into all truth. Hear me somebody, if you ain't got that thing, that person guiding you in truth, chances are you're walking in deception. You're walking in lies. Oh, you need an improvement today. You need an improvement. Somebody send call the painter. Send call the carpenter this morning. Be oh Lord Almighty. The builder is in the room. His name is Jesus. Oh, he wants to build. He wants to construct. He wants to help. He wants to improve. He wants to make you better. Oh, hear me somebody. He's going to build through the Holy Ghost this morning. Hear me. Walk in the spirit that he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Understand this, people of God. Walk in the spirit implies that not only is the Holy Spirit living in me, but I am being influenced by the spirit of God. Not only am I being influenced, but I'm patterning my conduct and my behavior. Oh, if you're in the improvement center, you better get ready for this one. Oh God, because Almighty, I've got a role model lady teacher, and that is the Holy Ghost. And he's a Holy Ghost of love. I've got to improve in my love. I've got 
to improve in my peace. I've got to improve in my joy, Lord. These, according to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 and 23, these are the qualities of the Holy Ghost. Love, joy, peace, temperance, long-suffering. I've got to improve at these. I've got to excel at oh God. Somebody needs to declare today. Excellence is not unbreak. I'm not satisfying for 50%. I ain't satisfying for 30%. Oh God, I'm an A student. I don't know about you, teacher. But I am struggling when I get 90% because there is more. There is another level. I want to touch somebody this morning and tell you there is another level in God. Almighty God. There is another stage for you to get when you come to a session of improvement. It's about improving your character. Oh, Jesus. Hear what Jesus says. Jesus says in St. Matthew chapter 7, I believe verse 16 down, he said, can a tree bring forth a good tree, bring forth bad fruit. If I claim to be good, Lord of mercy, hear me somebody, hear me somebody, I must get ready to stand the evaluation. What is the evaluation? It is by virtue of the fruit I produce. I want to say to somebody this morning, hear me somebody, oh Lord, but hear me lady teacher, there are sometimes I am a farmer, by the way. I'll tell you this that I'm a farmer. I remember one time gone down in Trelawney, Jamaica. I planted some yam lady teacher. And I noticed that the leaves were turning yellow. And anybody know about yam? Yam is supposed to be the easiest thing to grow. It's the easiest thing to meet fruit, Sean, because it doesn't need all the delicate care that the other uh, plants and, and, and produce requires. Watch this, somebody. I remember getting to a place, Lady Teacher. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Watch me. I remember getting to a place. Hallelujah. Watch this. That as I planted, I, I watched the leaves. They started to turn yellow and some of the leaves were falling over. But you know what? There was a problem, lady teacher. Um, I went back and I did a little investigation. I started to check what was going on. But there were some shrubs and bushes that hung over the plant, which was blocking the sunlight. Hear me on this platform. I don't know what's blocking your sunlight. Light. I'm not talking about the S-U-N. I'm talking about the S-O-N. What is blocking that light from shining in your heart and shining out of your heart? Hear me on this platform. You got to do some removal. If you want improvement, you got to commit to getting rid of some things. Hear me. I was not about to let those young die. I don't know about somebody, but I'm not about to let my joy die. I won't let my peace die. I won't let my passion in God die. That means I got to get rid of something. I went and I got my machete and I started to trim down some shrubs, get rid of some things that were blocking the light. Anybody understand that sun plays an important part in chlorophyll? which is necessary for the growth of oh God and development of the young. I got to get rid of something. I come to tell somebody that there are some things that is keeping us from reaching our maximum potential in God. I got to be ready to discontinue some things. I got to separate my thing. My, oh God and my, oh Lord, 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 Lord. Hear me, Lady Tijon. 
At the time, I was told that it's necessary to have some bush around the farm. And I was told by someone that it will keep people from recognizing your lovely producer and so that they won't steal it. You got to be careful of the advice you're getting because some advisors come to stop production. Some advisors come to block improvement. But I'm coming up your street. I came to that point where I realized that some things got to go in order for me to be blessed. Who am I talking to this morning? This is why the Bible tells us that God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, if I'm going to make you a father of many nations, if I'm going to improve you, you know the thing I've come to realize, Lady Teacher, his name Abraham literally meant father of many lord god almighty but he never saw his full of this fulfilled until he got rid of some things i got to tell somebody on this platform that you are a son and you're blessed you are a daughter and you're blessed but just because a word of prophecy is upon your life if you don't get rid of something you won't get to maximum potential you won't experience greatness and success can i just tell you for a few minutes that the word success is not based upon the amount of things we uh, we acquire but success is based upon fulfilling god's expectation hear me on this platform here is what god told joshua in joshua 1 verse 8 you must take this word live by every one of these words meditate upon it and take heed to do all of it only then shall thou be prosperous and have good success i come to tell somebody that there's a word release over your life that you should be successful that you should have good success and be prosperous but there are some things i got to get rid of if i'm going to experience the prophetic word that was released over my life i'm going in this morning hear me somebody psalm chapter one and verse one the bible says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the ways of sinners but his seed is in the law but is it is in the law and in the lord what he meditate the night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whatsoever thou doest shall prosper i come to tell somebody that true prosperity lies in our ability to take heed and to do lord god romans chapter 10 and verse 17 declares oh god almighty hallelujah that faith cometh by hearing but by hearing the word of god hear me on this platform in the context when that was spoken people never had access to the word they had to rely on a prophet rely upon a teacher but i have come to tell you today that god has given your word and you better take david foolish advice psalm 119 and verse 11 thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path i feel like telling somebody that the way to reach your maximum potential is to release yourself of some things abraham <coughs> Abraham had a name that meant father, but was still fatherless. Jesus, I'm going to help some people today. Many of us are called Christians, which means Christ-like. But being Christ-like will not occur by miracle. Oh Lord. <coughs> Jesus says and sets out the parameter of god almighty whereby we must receive he said you must love me and if you love me you will then do all i am saying i got to tell you that there is a place for doing in the kingdom of god hear me <laughs> the inventor of hard work is god 
<laughs> not the devil. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Hear me, somebody. The God I serve is not a name it and claim it God. Mm -hmm. You can name it and be a better Christian. This is not the name it and claim it kind of thing. It is something that requires you to do. Having heard the word of God, then you must fall into action. Lord God. The word here when understood in the Hebrew perspective comes from the word shame, which means to hear and to move to action. I come to tell somebody that there is a level for you to get this morning. You just need to hear the word of God and move to action. Get rid of some things. Oh Lord Almighty. No wonder why Abraham, God said to him, Abraham, Abraham, listen to me. There are some things you're going to have to get rid of. You're going to have to leave Tira's house. You're going to leave those idolatry behind. I know you got your comfortable bed. And I know you're comfortable. Lord God, can I tell some Christians on here, complacency is enemy to progress. I got to tell you this, like I feel it this morning. Sometimes the people of God gets a bit too comfortable, Lord God. Comfort will keep you from reaching potential, Lord God. Comfort will cause you to despise improvement. Lord of mercy. Hey, some people have gotten too comfortable in your office, in your calling. Therefore, you ain't improving. But I come this morning to release this word on this platform that now that you've heard the word, it's time to move. Movements mean that sometimes you got to leave where you are. I'm not just talking about physically, but I'm talking about leaving men. Lord Jesus, the Bible tells me of a man by the name of Lot. He had a wife, but that's all we know. Mrs. Lot was told to leave Sodom physically, mentally, and spiritually. Lord of mercy. But somewhere along the line, although she was leaving physically, her mind and thoughts and heart was still trapped in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know the end result. Oh God, she never made it to potential. She never made it to fulfillment of purpose. She never made it to fulfillment of call. She never made it to improvement. She never made it to enrichment. I got to tell somebody, don't just leave physically, but leave spiritually, leave mentally, leave psychologically. God Almighty, you God Almighty, we got to many people in the faith uh, who have walked away from sin physically but their mind is still playing up in sin i come to preach like a feeling this morning oh praise the name of the lord too many people have come to an end physically but mentally they are still in the place it's dangerous i come to tell somebody be he said Free. Be set free. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can I help somebody to understand that many people have only spoken but not repent? Because the word repent means to have a change of mind. Lord Almighty, the word repent means to go in the opposite direction. I've been going somewhere and I'm going to turn and go in the right direction. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. We may never encounter full enrichment and empowerment until we have left. Hear me on this platform. Hear me on this platform. He that has begun a good work in you is able to perform it until the day of, 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 of Jesus Christ. Can I speak over your life a few more seconds as I get ready to bring this to a close? Hear me no more. The Bible 
Paul says in Romans chapter 8 and 20, and we know that all thing just because he called me and I said yes and I'm going to a rough patch is not okay for me to return oh help me help me help me God called Abraham and said Abraham go into a land that I will send you and I will bless you and I will bless you as the stars of the sky and as the sun upon the seashore I will cause thy seed to possess all the gates of thy enemies. Oh God Almighty, hear me. A word of prophecy is not enough. When you have received a word from the preacher, the teacher, the prophet, or the apostle, there is a need for you to swing into action. I wish somebody could go ahead and type, I'm going to swing into action. Lord of mercy, hear me somebody. I'm going to get excited about going into action. The Bible tells us that on several occasions that Abraham thought it would have occurred in his time. It did not occur, but he kept on going back to God. Wow! God of me. One day they were in the plains of Myri and God decided to come and have an upfront and personal meeting with him. Hear me somebody. I need an upfront and personal meeting with God. Somebody need to book the appointment. Oh God Almighty, a few good. Book the appointment. Book the appointment. The Bible says that the oh God, that the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. And dear God reminded him that he would be blessed and that his, he would become the father of many nations. Watch this. Not only did he say that, but he said, your wife Sarah shall become the mother of many nations. Lady, Lady Teacher, I don't know, but when God comes and tells you, you're going to be the father and mother, hear me, there was no space for any concubine. Lord of mercy. God was going to make it so real that you couldn't, that, that Abraham couldn't help him. To, to, to deliver that which, that which God was promised. God was going to do something that man couldn't do. Lord have mercy. Not only will you be the father, but your whole wife. Mm. Your wife who passed a certain stage in her life will be the mother of that nation. Sometimes one has to understand that the giving of a word requires immediate action. Oh, Jesus. Abraham is called the father of faith. Why? What is faith for the Hebrew people? Faith, according to the Hebrew translation, means immune, means to become passionately committed to action. How many of us have read the word of God but still halting? I want somebody to type today. It's time to move. Move, move, move. Oh, glory to God. Watch this people of God. Because when you are moving, you got a man. There is a tendency to look at what you're leaving. But there's another word in Hebrew from which we get the word trust, which is the word bata. And the word bata means to become careless about everything else. Oh God, while putting your confidence in God. Here's what Psalm 118 verse 8 declares. It is better to trust in God than to put your confidence in man. Hear me. It is unprecedented. But if God says it, I am ready. Somebody need to type, I am ready. Oh, glory to God. I'm wrapping up this morning. Oh, glory to God. Let me wrap it up. So the, the, the conclusion of this message, Lady Teacher, is that faith must not only talk, but faith must walk. Oh, the mercy. Woo! Hallelujah. Faith must not only talk, <coughs> but it must walk. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, oh God, that I will make you parents of many nations. Biologically, her chances of becoming pregnant 
was significantly reduced. Her husband was old and stricken in age. And if I could borrow a word from the Jamaican vocabulary, I might say the man was old and cold. <laughs> Ah, but don't you know that when God release a word, it calls for action. In fact, the Bible would have declared to us that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promise when you are faced with challenges you need to judge him right <laughs> oh watch this what that means lady teacher is that the word judge means to evaluate to assess and to analyze watch me <laughs> there can be no true faith unless there is revelation oh the word what the bible says the bible says without the vision the people perish i'm not talking about your mental concept or your mental views and ideas the word from which we get vision is chosen and it speaks about divine communication lord of mercy Hey, I got to tell somebody that faith is anchored on what God says, not what man says. I'm going to help somebody on this platform. If God says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. You need to get up and get going because God is calling you to action. Oh, Lord. The word faith, when understood from the Hebrew perspective as Paul used it, comes from the Greek word pistuo, which is a verb that means to believe. When that word becomes unknown, it speaks about belief, firm persuasion, assurance, firm conviction, and faithfulness. Oh, God Almighty. Can I help somebody to understand this? It means, Lady Jennifer, that it is irreversible. Hold on. I'm going to help somebody. Man run out of time because they don't control time. <clears throat> I know according to Bible, you are intended to live three score and ten equals 70 years. For man, that is a limitation. Ooh. For man, that is a constraint. But don't you know that when you get to 70, the Lord can add a further 30. Where is Ezekiah? God sent a word through the prophet and said, your time to die has come. The man of God got down and prayed and cried to God. 15 years was we help some people. Hear me somebody. I will not make poor decision because time look like it's run. Lord of mercy. Oh God, where you go God? Oh Lord. They were past the normal processing time, Lady Tidra. But guess who invent the process? A God. A God. A God, a God, a God, a God, a God. Lord Jesus, if he invents the process, he has the legal right, oh God, to amend the process. Lord Almighty, may the Lord amend a bill concerning your life today. Woo! Yes, sir. Oh, Lord Almighty. Yes, sir. Hear me on this platform. The time was not only running out for Abraham and his wife. Time did gone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Time expired. But when God gives a chasm, he is in control of time. Oh, Lord Almighty. What? Oh, God. Hold on. All limitations affect man because man is a creature and not the creator. Oh, Lord. I'm going to help some people. Lord of mercy. Hear me on this platform. The creator has, the, cre the creature rather, has to abide by the specification laid out in the order that is in God's will. Oh, Lord Almighty. God 
is in control of the will. Oh God, hear me now, man. Jesus. The children of Israel were trapped into exile. Lord of mercy. And they were seeking an easy way out. God sent a word in exile. Build house, get married, and have children. Lord of mercy. How can God tell someone to expand in hardship? Expand, Lord Almighty. Because God is about improvement, enrichment, and empowerment. My God is not affected by your limitations. Hear me so, Lord of mercy. Oi, I'm going to get myself in trouble. So let me wrap this up tonight. Let me wrap this up this morning. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. We seem to see God through the lenses of our same limitations and shortcomings. And we keep saying, God, it got to get to the deadline. You know that God can extend the deadline. Don't you know that God, pos- oh God, hear me. Hear me. I, I have preached and, and testified so many times about this. That my wife and myself went to NHT in Jamaica to buy a house. And they laugh at us and ridicule us. They said to us at the time that your salary is not even half of what you need to qualify for the cost of the house. Lord of mercy. We lack what it required. And for a while I came out there limiting God by my own my limitation. Be careful you are seeing God through the same lens you see yourself. Oh Lord. Somebody need to take off your blinders. Jesus. Your blinders have affected your capacity to think and reason and to perceive your maker and creator. Release the blinders. Oh God Almighty. Oh Lord. You got to release. Oh God Almighty. That which bars your capacity to trust God. Because trust is going to require you to see God in a different light from you perceive yourself and all other men. Oh Lord, hear me. I remember that when my wife went back to her workplace, they call us the two little people. It was meant to be to see us as being insignificant, inferior. I will take them two little people here. We are big people and we not qualify. I will make them things say, why do they think they could qualify? Oh God. Jesus, I feel the one here this morning. Hear me to somebody. Oh Lord, I don't care how many no's you receive. You are working for one yes. Ooh. The problem is the faith believer sometimes get ampered by the limitations. And that's why we come to call you to enrichment through faith this morning. Hear me on this platform. I remember leaving that day and feeling discouraged but then i hear god said to me listen to me you are here praying to get a raise of pay <laughs> you're praying for your wife to get a new job can i help some people because we see god blessing by our own limitation we work out how the thing's supposed to work and the thing can only work this way but i come to tell you on this platform uh, Mm -hmm. my God will do what no one else have ever even thought think or perceived my God will do greatness something that has never been accomplished I want the body of Christ who start looking sometimes like weakling and sympathon to understand that you now have to follow the order Hear me. They have set out a pattern for your family, but you have the right to break that. Hear me. My family, they are all farmers and vendors and, oh God Almighty, laborers. But when I met Jesus, I said, God, the script must change. I am home to help you on this platform. Change the script. Lord of mercy. Mm. I don't want to label me as no middle class person. Oh, I am not, hold on, I am not subscribing to the expectation of society. Oh Lord, I've come today for, for improvement. 
have come for enrichment. Because my faith must be raised to another level. That God must be able to cause me to inherit some things that were beyond normal me. Hear me. It's not just me. It is team God and me. Lord of mercy. God and I doing this in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Hear me. Lord Almighty. In the day Abraham and, and Abraham and his wife never saw it possible. And if they spoke to 100 people, 100 people would have said no. It's not possible. But don't you know, you just need to trust God because you're contending for one yes. Lady Nadine, one yes. Lady Stephanie Brown, one yes. You are being enriched this morning because you want one yes. Lady Marlene Jackson, just one yes. They laughed at us. Anytime your feelings start hurt, a time to pray more. <laughs> Anytime your feelings has been hurt, take your burdens to the Lord. <laughs> but hear what? Leave it there. <laughs> take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Watch me. They called us the two little insignificant people. But we trusted God. And by the way, this was supposed to be a believing community because my wife was working at a church office. <laughs> Lord of mercy. It was supposed to be the believing community. But they still call us the little people. May God cause you to encounter and experience greatness. So that all who place a limit on you may come to celebrate you. <clears throat> may the Lord create a table so big and obvious that it cannot be hidden. That those who once spoke down to you will now have to recognize what God has done for you. Hear me as I close. The Lord said to me in that moment, and I don't have to bless through a job. I'm telling somebody here, you know, if somebody is busily praying for a new job, and I'm coming right up your street, because God doesn't have to give you a new job to bless you. Lord of mercy. Okay. Where am I going? I'm helping somebody. We were praying for my wife to get a, for me to get a promotion. Hear me. God does not have to give you <laughs> a promotion to bless you. I go and fix this thing this morning. I feel God. Hear me. Somebody may be on here waiting to complete the degree to get a better peer. May I come right up your street. I had just completed my first degree. Was getting the salary of a diploma teacher. Was dying for the ministry to approve my new role so that the salary would improve. <laughs> None of that occur, but God still bless me. Oh God, hear me. Take off the glasses you have been using to see God. Mm -mm. You need to go back to the, up, the spiritual ophthalmologist. Lord have mercy. Hold well on. When, when, when the Lord worked, Jesus worked the miracle for buying body. He saw a man walking like tree. Jesus make sure to fix that. Because you're not supposed to see man walking like tree. You must see it clear. Hear me on this platform. Oh God, may the Lord change your view and outlook this morning. In the name of Jesus. So you can see God acting this morning. I feel God this morning. Hear me. Hear me on this platform. We left. We continue to work. Hold on. We started to eat our Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Friday, Sunday, Saturday. And, and sometimes if there was another day, we would have gone Sunday another day. Because we thought we needed to save more. Hear me. The more we tried to save, high tax took it away. I'm helping somebody this Anybody facing high tax this week, this year? Oh, God. I'm coming right up your street. Oh, Lord. 
May your difficult journey invite God on the inside to show that he is the one who is capable to hold you, sustain you, and keep you. Mm. Government raised tax. I remember all cheese party did raise and tax go on cheese party. Mm. Oh, the mercy. So I could no longer eat patty. <laughs> I go help some people this morning. There is no high taxes that affects heaven. Can I tell you, there is no recession in heaven's economy. Lord have mercy. My salary is not defined by any UK pound, any US currency, any Canadian currency. It's not by Jamaican. Lord God. Oh, Lord Almighty. Those currencies are and will experience inflation. But I've got a currency called faith. I'm going to raise my faith in God because it cannot lose value. It does not so God Almighty. It's not affected by inflation. Raise your faith this morning. In the name of Jesus, raise your faith. Hear me. One day I preach at church. And after we done preach, we're still worrying about where we're living because we were gross uncomfortable. Hear me. The discomfort you're facing is going to work out for your good. Lord have mercy. Some people who making up noise next door you <laughs> is going to work out for your blessing. Lord, hear me. <laughs> Some people who knock on your door too early will work out for your blessing. Some text message and WhatsApp message, phone call you have been receiving is meant to push you to your next level. God is meant for you to encounter God in his fullest. We were uncomfortable for a while, <laughs> but we kept trusting God. Hear me. I heard that word. The Lord said to me, why don't you believe me for a house? Listen to me. I'm going to help somebody, you know. God, this is my little bean, the tip of money. It cannot even pay rent, God. I'm struggling to pay the insurance on the car. I am struggling to buy food. God, you're not tired to see me eat Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Tuesday. What you talking about? Woo! All when we can see it, he's still working. He's still working. <laughs> Lord, help me on this platform. Hear me. Hear me on this platform. Say, God, it's not possible. Sometimes we are spewing our God's ability through our limitless brain and lenses. We think God is limited because we are limited. Sometimes we think that we are more wise than God. So God, you have to promote me to do it, you know, because if you don't do it, it's not going to work. Where are the advisors? Can I tell you, relinquish the office. Some people need to resign the office of advisor because God never employed no advisor. Ooh. He employed people he wants to advise. Jesus. If you are going to be advised, then you've got to listen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. You've got to be ready to hear from the Lord. Hear me on this platform. I went to work. Some friends showed me a property and, and, and said to me, what you think about this property? From the moment I see one lip I fall in love. Send one text message immediately. Faith, passionately committed to action. To my wife. She, she immediately approved it. And we decided to go. I remember that Saturday we journeyed to the property. Hear me. Source of woodland. <laughs> oh Lord. It was all grass, shrubs and bush. <laughs> May the Lord cause what looks in fear. Oh, Lord Almighty, to become superior in the name of the Lord. May the Lord add value to that which is insignificant. May the Lord Almighty work something good out of what looked impossible. All I saw was woodland. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, 
this is going to be the place. They were developing the property in another direction. And when the, 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 the gentleman came, he took me to show me some other places. But I said, I feel right here. <laughs> he tried to discourage me because that side was a little bit more expensive. <laughs> I am going to help some people this, this morning because we are not settling, Lady Tijo. We are not settling. Hear me. We are the children of God. Yes, excess is at our advantage. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above all we could ever ask or think of. We must not just quote the scripture. It is more important to live the scripture. Jesus, hear me on this platform. That particular morning, we, 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 we drove over into the woodland, into an imaginary garage. <laughs> we came out and opened imaginary door. Wife, open your door now. Turn the TV on. <laughs> Wife, go run a boat. <laughs> we begun to declare and to believe God. So, so woodland. Sometimes God is going to use the foolishness of this world to confirm the wise. <laughs> the, the, the property owner came and said, young man, I see you walking up on my property. If you can come up with 10%, we will have the property available for you. People, I did not have any 10%. But I was not subscribing to my limitation, I was about to tap into my God's ability. All I said to him, I don't have 10%, but I have faith. I have nothing plus faith. Because what I'm about to let you know is that if God intervenes in my little nothing or insignificant circumstance, he has the ability to turn it around. People of God, I went back there the following week. He came, he saw me, he got annoyed. Have you gotten my 10%? No, I have nothing plus feet. We went back there the next week. <laughs> we went back there the next week. Lord of mercy. He came and he saw us walking around and declaring this property is ours. <laughs> And he said to us, if you can find 5%, we will make it available for you. Hear me. We still never had the 5%. But the following week, we went back to the property. He came, do you have a 5%? No, sir. We have nothing plus faith. <laughs> he left. We shot the next week. <laughs> you have the 5%? No, sir. We have nothing plus faith. <laughs> Hear me. May the Lord cause your faith to irritate some people to give you a favor. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to help some people. Somebody needs to book an appointment with your employer. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord, 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 Lord. Oh, Jesus. Hear me, somebody. Lord of mercy. You may have been thinking to acquire a property. Get up and go book an appointment this month, God. Get on the phone. Oh, Lord. <laughs> they, they, they call it in our world interest. You must show interest <laughs> to receive interest. Hear me. We showed up again. The last time we showed up, he said to us, do you have the 5%? I said, sir, I have nothing but faith. My God will and can. He looked at me and he said, young man, hear what? Anything you have, bring it come. <laughs> I will start construction. Lord Jesus, help me on this platform. <laughs> Listen me. We came back the following week and we had nothing plus faith. 
the salary was too meager to save anything. We couldn't give nothing. <laughs> we could barely pay the gas fee to go back every week. <laughs> Sometimes we don't prove God because we are not willing to step out of the boat. Mm. Sometimes we don't experience greatness for we are too nervous to go into the unprecedented. But may the Lord inspire you this morning to step out in the unprecedented. Go where there has been no path. Create path where there was none. Everywhere there's a road in this world. It was once bush and vegetation until somebody turned up and decided to make a path there. May you become movement shakers change agents and catalysts of change the church is looking for people who are ready to encounter proof god and come back and testify so we can build up the community of god hear me on this platform he said bring back anything we had nothing he came the following week he said to us what have you what do you have nothing plus faith I thought we irritated him too much. <laughs> he finally said, I am going to start building and whatever you can, come and claim it. <laughs> the following year, we moved into our property, singing and clapping and shouting. Oh, did I tell you? That God said he reserved the right to change the government. The government was changed. And one of his first policy was that he was going to reduce uh, the interest rate for persons who were earning so little. At the time, my wife was, work, was earning almost minimum wage with a first degree. Who am I talking to this morning? Some of you may be, be paid below minimum wage. You are being paid less than your worth. Less than you, 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 your body had a first degree, but was, was was working a little over minimum wage. But God was going to allow her to get free money. She got a loan at zero percent. In <laughs> sometimes a delay is for greater. Hear me. What we were trying to initially borrow that we were not qualified for, with less we were qualified for more, and we were able to acquire the property. <clears throat> Nothing plus faith. Amen. Amen. This morning, I am challenging you on this platform. I've enlisted this word. May your nothing be added to faith to gain testimony this morning in the name of Jesus. May your helpless circumstance added to faith yield results this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. May your look down on state Bring your joy as you apply faith to receive excess and greatness from the Lord. My people, amen. I hope that you were challenged and blessed this morning. Amen. Challenged and blessed this morning. Let me just tell you, amen, that this is one of the chapters from, from this same book. Biblical keys for faith activation. Get this book and uncover 14 keys to raise your faith. Pleasing God requires correct information. If we lack the correct information, we are going to struggle. We are going to struggle. Let me challenge you to support this book. Get this book. It's available on Amazon or on Barnes & Noble. And if you're in Jamaica, connect with me or Reverend Valentine Rodney, and you can get one of this book to help raise your faith. Because I believe that this is a year when God wants to bless the most. Hear me. In this pandemic, 
God wants to bring out greatness. He wants to give to his people so that he can show you that he's not limited to good times. God wants you to know that the season is not affecting him in the name of Jesus. He is not affected by the circumstances. You are looking at him through your limited lens. God does not have to wait till this pandemic is over for you to get that tertiary education. I am, it's too many people are hung up waiting for the, the pandemic to be finished. I want to prove God in adversity because at that time, I am sure that it is God. May you encounter God this morning through adversity. God bless you. Over to you, Lady Teacher. Lord, I thank you for the word this morning. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I'm, you see my face, even though I can't get the smile down, because when I tell you that the word of God is sweet, the word of God is sweet. You understand? But let it just not stop there. Let it just not be a, a, a fun story that was shared. You know, or a testimony that you're going and you hear the cliche of all of these things. Understand that this is somebody's experience with God. And if we don't get these hard times, there's no way we can understand who God is. The only way to know who God is is to experience him. These are the places where we experience God in our challenging situations. You know, he promised that he will never leave us. So we need to lean on him. Rev put it out there that we have to renew our minds. We have to renew the way we think this. And I keep telling people, this is our spiritual heart. This is where we have to renew. This is where the fight is. You understand? This is what... Um, God controls, and this is where the devil wants to control, because once the mind takes something, everything else will follow. So we have to renew our mind, and then we have to come out of our comfort zone. You know, I can attest to that one, because I remember when God made me very uncomfortable, just so I was able to move to where he wanted me to be, where he can position me to win. You know, and I, I, I can't stand here this morning and say all of that. But we have to learn. We need to learn God's ways. We need to learn his ways so we can move into immediate action when he speaks to us. And I love how Rev put it this morning. Faith must not only be a talk. Faith should be your walk. Any, any platform that you're on, WhatsApp, Facebook. Put that as your status this morning. Faith must not only be a talk. It must be a walk. And then don't worry about what people say. People will always have something to say. Rejection will always come. But like Rev said, don't take what they say. Don't, don't, don't take the label of being the little people. You know, know who you are and whose you are. We are royalty and we know our daddy we know our daddy is the king. So we know that we are special. You know, we're, we're that peculiar nation. You know, if you will, we know whose we are. And then shake up the status quo. Shake up the status quo. My story not going to be the same like, like um, Nicholas's. My story is not going to be the same like Nadine Loy. The same procedure is not going to be carried out for me to get to that promise that God has given me. So we have to understand that everybody's journey is different, but we have one thing in common. We need to hold on to God. Hold on to him because he will steer us in the right path. I don't know about you this morning, but I tell you, I am full. I am blessed. I am motivated. I am encouraged. I'm revved up, you know, to go out into the world and to share my testimony. And I'm, I'm telling you this, that I don't call myself a new believer anymore, but I tell you the word of God, the word of God is sweet. So this morning, as we go on our daily um, business, go throughout our daily lives, as we like to say it, remember that God is in control. 
no matter the situation, we all have a purpose. You understand? Remember that the promise was already made. It is there. How we get there is left up to God, the unlimited God that we serve. Take him out of a box. Take him out of a box. The same God then is the same God today. The same God before the pandemic is the same God throughout the pandemic. And I have proven him. I have proven him over and over. So let us remember. Let us not forget what our God is capable of doing. What he has done and what he will continue to do. Let us remember our God. Rev, pray us out, please. Amen. Father, we just want to bless you. We thank you for today. Thank you for uh, every person here gathered this morning. Hallelujah. Father, I have faith and confidence that this is what you wanted your persons to hear this morning. And I pray that, God, it may not just be thoughts and words that were shared, but, Father, it has given them the passion, renew the zeal, hallelujah, to press on, hallelujah, to excel, to, to see God for who he is to understand God as he is intended to be understood. I pray, oh God Almighty, that whatever they are believing and trusting you for in this time and season, hallelujah, may they, God, have the capacity first to grow in faith, grow in knowledge and awareness of your word and what you expect of us, God. And Father, even as they fulfill those, God, may they encounter and experience you Hallelujah, at new and updated levels in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray your people will be enriched and empowered. Your people will be strengthened, oh God, as they go through this week. Let them know that the difficulties, hallelujah, presents an opportunity, oh God, for them to encounter and for them to experience God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they, oh God Almighty, as they trust, believe, and, and receive that word today, God Almighty, that God, they will continue to grow in their faith, trusting and believe in you. Father, for those, oh God, who might be requiring healing today, we come in agreement and believe you, God, for healing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For those, oh God, who are believing you, God, for financial breakthrough, those who might be going to school, have children going to school, believe in God Almighty uh, for the opportunity to show up. Those who might have high student loan that need to be covered, we come, oh God, believing and trusting you to help and, oh God, for you to make the way possible in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, bless the ministers who continue to lead your people. Hallelujah. Father, continue to let them grow as well and be empowered, grow in strength, grow in your word, and grow in the capacity, oh God, to continue to lead. Hallelujah. And bless us collectively, God, that we all can be that strong community, potent in the word, potent, God, in the experience, trusting and believing you. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. 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 What a word this morning. But before we go, I mm. want to welcome, welcome um, the new people that I see in the chat. I've seen a lot of new um, names yes. in the chat this morning. Just welcome to our platform. Welcome to Positive Vibration. And I hope, I How hope. Okay. I hope you guys have, have gotten, you know, the breakfast this morning that you need to go on your day. Um, welcome Donna Gentles, Stella Bella, Sophia Lloyd, Sharon Roberts, um, Usha Get There Collings, Denisha Longgren Muir, um, Tari Williams, Richard, and Ian Dixon. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our platform. Hallelujah. So this morning we just we just want to thank God for everything that He's done. Um, we'll be back here tomorrow morning at 6.30 <laughs> Eastern and um, Jamaican time. And we'll be here at 11.30 UK time, Rev. 11.30? 11.29. Okay. 11.29 UK time. So 6.29 Eastern and Jamaican time. And then um, this evening, we will... Have our couples corner at 
for? 4 p.m. Jamaica Eastern and, of course, 9 p.m. UK time. Okay. Um, so we, these are the other programs that we would like you guys to just come on over and support. Trust me, the Couples Corner is the space where you come to lead, you know, just let out your hair a little bit, chillax, yeah. relax, learn. You know, if you are in a marriage, get best practices out of it, how other people, you know, are letting it work. Or if you are a single person, come on in and learn what it means to be, you know, a married couple. <laughs> Amen. But yes. let me know special greetings to my brother and pastor. Amen. Pastor Ian Dixon. Far we are come from. You know, one of them there we are come preach together. <laughs> Blessing, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But yes, just come on over to those platforms. And as we go through our day this morning, just remember that faith cannot lose value. So we mm. need to hold on to our faith. And know that our God is unlimited. Amen, amen, amen. Have a wonderful and blessed day, everyone. Amen. And as we go, we're going to be bringing you live stream sometime today as the, the, the team that is out. We might tell you a team is out in Manchester. Um, just just going to extend the service that we're offering here um, to the Mount Alvet. Feel free to join in and we're going to make the link possible for you to come in and just big up Builderman program and just leave your word of encouragement. So um, just look out for the, for, the, um, for the link that will come in various groups and feel free to just drop in and just give us a word or two of encouragement as we celebrate this major and big move. Remember, get this book for those of you who are on overseas, yeah, man, go and support this book. Um, uh, this is Biblical Keys for Faith Activation. This is meant to empower and to strengthen. You may not need it, but maybe you know someone. It's Christmas. You're thinking about giving someone a gift. It's Thanksgiving. You want to give them a gift. How about giving them a book with some real-life principles that we can take and adapt to improve our faith? What about that person you have been encouraging, that son, that daughter you have been encouraging to serve God? Well, this is a good time for you to do that. And, and just pass this on to them and trust the material to work through their lives. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Lady Tija for moderating for us this morning. Thanks to Lady Hazel. Amen. For leading our worship. That said, people of God, God bless you and see you later. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels. Subscribe. Help us to grow. Follow us on Facebook. We are going towards 10,000. That is the goal. Help us get there. God bless you and take care. Hey, have you gotten that book yet? Biblical Keys for Faith Activation. Listen to me, people. If you haven't gotten that book, you need to go get that book. It's already on Amazon. The author is Nicholas Robertson. Listen, go get the book and learn how to activate your faith in this season. Go get that book now.